I'm going to talk about the coefficient of lift and the coefficient of drag. If you recall in our last uh, uh, discussion, I talked about the total lift equation and one of the factors that we're concerned with as pilots from second to second as we're flying our airplane is coefficient of lift, which is a function of angle of attack in the shape of the wing. So we think in our minds of angle of attack or angle of attack control, very important, especially in upset recovery. It is one of the key uh, areas or key tools that we're going to use to optimize lift, which is going to help us to efficiently recover the airplane. Um, now, uh, airspeed is one of the other factors that I mentioned to you as well, but I'm not discussing airspeed at this point. What we're going to discuss now is the coefficient of lift and drag so that we can see how it relates in our total equation here. Let's look at We have coefficient of lift over here, and notice we have angle of attack along the bottom. And here's a typical coefficient of lift curve for some generic fixed wing aircraft, this being the coefficient of drag curve. But let's talk about coefficient of lift here. Notice as angle of attack increases, the coefficient of lift increases for this airplane. Again, it's not the total lift because we have to combine this coefficient with those other factors, namely airspeed, in order to get the total lift that we're talking about. But where we are on this coefficient of lift curve is vital for us to understand where we are uh, in, the, in, the air, uh, in the aircraft envelope and how the airplane is going to be able to maneuver, especially as it relates to stability and controllability. Because notice, as we increase angle of attack, the coefficient of lift goes up, and eventually, by design, this wing is producing the most coefficient of lift that it can at this angle of attack. And this is critical angle of attack. And this is where stall typically happens. Notice coefficient of lift goes down as we exceed that critical angle of attack. Uh, it is still producing lift. Most guys have a Christopher Columbus view of lift that the airplane quits producing lift. However, notice it is still producing lift, but in a decreasing amount. And this is going to have major ramifications on us if we enter the area of stall on our stability and controllability. Uh, notice the drag curve as angle of attack goes up, the drag is going up. But what kind of drag is this? Well, this is induced drag. There are two types, right? There's the parasitic drag. Some people think of it as form drag. And there's induced drag. Some guys think of induced drag as a fact or a function of lift. Well, more specifically, it's a function of of angle of attack. And notice it's an exponential curve. Um, let's just take a quick example. An aircraft at a hundred knots, he might be producing this angle of attack or this coefficient of lift to stay airborne. Uh, if he were to double his weight, yet maintain a hundred knots, he would need to in effect, double his coefficient of lift or increase his angle of attack, he would now be here on the coefficient of lift curve uh, and that much closer to stall. So that's one reason why heavier airplanes have higher stall speeds is because of a, the fact that we are typically at a higher angle of attack. Now understanding how these relate to, to each other is very important as we uh, learn how to recover our airplanes in an upset. And we go into much greater detail in understanding what to do. What to do actually in the aircraft efficiently, quickly to be able to recover the airplane, to minimize, first of all, to regain and maintain control of the airplane, and then to minimize altitude loss. Again, this simply builds the foundation on which we understand why we're doing what we're doing. We'll touch on more a little bit later on. Thanks for joining me.